I am passionate about getting more women into technology, specifically computer science. I've been with She++ for two years now. I started right off the bat when I was a freshman when I saw their stand at the Stanford Activities Fair and I said I needed to be a part of this. And I'm really interested about getting girls when they're young, um, middle school and high school, and getting them into computer science because I think it's a wonderful field and um, a great place for a lot of people that they otherwise wouldn't be able to um, enter into if they didn't have outreach programs like She++. Why should someone be interested in learning computer science in the first place? It is a field that has revolutionized society and permeated every single industry. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, in, within your career, you're going to be working with people who need to know the computer science, be it you know medicine or even uh, education, um, anything. And, People think that, oh, computer science, I'm just going to be you know, programming for a company that just does programming. No, that's not true. You can make yourself an asset in any career if you had some computer science in your toolbox. I think within the tech world, there's this fallacy that if you can't understand what I'm saying, if you can't understand what I'm doing, then that means I'm smarter than you. And that is completely false. Um, if you look at a program and you have no idea what it does, that's not a good thing. That doesn't mean that the program are smarter than you. That means that they were just bad at doing their job at creating code that's reusable. And that's not a good way to propagate learning computer science and programming. And that's one of the reasons why it's such an intimidating field is because there's all of this esoteric jargon because there are all these terms that the, the names are only relevant to people who are in the field of computer science. And that's why a lot of people are intimidated by the field. So say I was you know, working on a CS assignment, I'm here on my laptop, I'm coding, and you come up to me and you say, Helen, what you doing? And I say to you, well, you know, I'm SSH into a virtual machine, working through the CLI and implementing a heap allocator, but my, you know, my git merge is getting all of these conflicts and I can't push to master and it's really annoying me. And you would say, that's great, Helen, I'm gonna leave now. But if you would ask the same question and I had said, I am just actually working on a computer science uh, project and it's actually something that's used in every single computer and it's used in your computer too. And you'd say, hey, Helen, that's cool, tell me more. And then more people would learn about all of the awesome applications of computer science. And yeah, so that's why I think, you know, be clear and speak in a way that other people wonder, will understand you because that, I think, is a true showing of intelligence. So what obstacles have I come across? Well, mainly, uh, the reason why I'm here, being a female in the field of technology, has had a lot of obstacles for me. Um, stereotype threat being a big one. It is hard to, you know, go into an internship or a computer science class and, you know, not seeing any role models who look like me. And it's discouraging at times. Um, within, you know, the industry, within the internships, um, there's this myth that, you know, she only got the job because she's a girl. And I know a lot of people feel that, and it's perpetuated through, you know, not only the, the, the females who are having that, uh, that issue, but, you know, the male saying it too. And that's often a tough issue to deal with because you have that sort of imposter syndrome where you don't think you belong somewhere, even though you do. Um, so we need to, the only way to crush that myth is to have a you know, closer to equal proportion so people can't be, pull that card and they can't say she got that job because she's a girl. And another obstacle that a lot of women in technology face is being forced to represent their entire gender whenever they answer a question or speak out or present something. When you are the only female in the room or one of the only females in the room, people don't look at you as any other person in the room. They look at you as, you know, the girl in the room. Um, when I've been speaking with my male colleagues um, at my internship, I remember they were talking about a seminar where the interns asked questions and they said, oh, it was the girl who asked that question. When, if it was a guy who had asked that question, when, oh yeah, Dave asked that question. But if it was a girl who asked the question, it was the girl. She's the one who asked the question. And, and that just goes to show that it takes a lot of courage to speak out in any way or to do something out of the ordinary because you are representing your entire gender when you do so. My advice for people facing obstacles like this, um, just keep on being awesome and don't let other people who are telling you you're not awesome or kind of um, uh, implying that you're not awesome keep you down. Um, even if you hear people say, you know, she only got the job because she's a girl, you know, don't let that get to you. Don't consider that. Um, a, a lot of people have this imposter syndrome just because that's what everyone else is saying around them, but um, don't let that bother you. And people will respect you just if you 
do ask that question, which is a good question, or do you know show off what you know, and don't be afraid to do that because once you start doing that, and once you start having a presence, and once all you know females in tech start having a presence and showing off what they can do because they're not afraid to, then that's when we're going to start getting the respect that we deserve. Thank you.